Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible. I'm Tom Hollis, the moderator, and today our panelists include... Dr. William Marglaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Pastor Mark Motor, Berean Church in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Pete Jackaloni, South Hills Assembly of God Church, Bethel Park, PA. J. Anthony Gilbert, pastor of Another Level Ministries in the North Hills area. Well, today on Hard Questions, we're taking everything from, talking about everything from suicide to forgiveness to hell. We've got a lot of places to go, pastors. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go to the first one. So, uh, Pete, we'll start off with you here. Is suicide an unforgivable sin? Well, suicide, yes. But let me, as I was preparing for this, uh, I was thinking about the unpardonable sin. Okay. Where, where we're told what the unpardonable sin is, and the unpardonable sin is attributing, very short and sweet definition, attributing the works of God unto Satan. That's mm -hmm. when they came and they mm -hmm. said, called Jesus Bezelzebub, and then Jesus came yeah. and said, this yeah. is unpardonable, this is unforgivable, because you're attributing the very works of God himself to the devil. That's the unpardonable sin. Now, dealing with suicide, I know in many denominations, Many denominate, if I may, even in the Catholic Church years ago, may, many of their cemeteries would not allow a suicide victim to be buried in their cemeteries. That's how they, uh, their stance against suicide. Again, we have discussed this before here. What happens to the individual that literally, lo uh, we'll say a born again believer, that literally has a breakdown? Or what do we do with the bipolar person that is, that is true chemically imbalanced and they take their life? To blanketly say all suicide is unpardonable, I as a pastor, I cannot go there. I yeah. will not go there. Yeah. Um, again, the final judge is Jesus, but, but Jay has brought out a, a dear lady that he personally knew in his church, uh, and maybe he'll speak to it. But the point is, I, I can't use the word all. I believe... Uh, for a person that can't deal with life and takes their life, it's over. It's because suicide at that moment mm -hmm. is murder. Mm -hmm. But a person that has a chemical imbalance, uh, I, I've got I to extend them the grace. Are you saying a person that doesn't have a chemical imbalance, someone that right. just ends their life, that that would they can't be... can't cope with life. Uh, that would be unforgivable or would I it? believe it's unforgivable. It's murder. Okay. They're taking okay. their own life. All right. Well, let's let's go to. Well, Pastor I would Glade. differ from Pete a little bit, but you know, I, I just want to begin by saying that if you're in that position right now, the question you shouldn't be asking is: Is it the unforgivable sin? But how can I get help? You know, uh, there's many hotlines out mm -hmm. there, much information that's out there, and I would encourage you by all that's within me to just get help mm -hmm. uh, and, and ask God to help you, you know, to work through it. So, you know, I, I, I want to start by saying that. Yeah, amen. But then I always go back, and here's where I would differ from Pete a little bit. You know, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, does it cover all sin or is it just, is it limited? Repent of sin. Repent of sin. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, there's a, in the next question coming up, we're going to deal with that a little bit. Okay. But... There's, there's sins that I don't, you know, that I commit that I don't repent of. I don't, you know, there's sins that I don't know that I've committed or I've committed as a Christian and I, I, I don't confess every sin. I don't repent of every sin that I commit. So am, am, is God not forgiven me? So, uh, you know, I, I, again, I'm going to go back to the blood of Christ and I'm going to say when he died on that cross, did his blood cover all sin or was there some sin that it didn't cover? You know, it even covers, it, it, it covers if I murder somebody, not, I hate to put it like that, but you know, <laughs> you know, if, if, if uh, it covers murder, you know, uh, you know, Andre Crouch sang the song, the blood will never lose its power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the blood is all powerful and you're saying that there's something that it doesn't cover, then is it all powerful? Well, that, so this is, doesn't have to repent. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Pete's but bringing up a good point. But do you repent of every sin? Uh, but should, should, no, you uh, use the word murderer. Should, should Does a we? murderer should. not need to repent? So in other words, a guy yeah. goes out in anger, goes out and kills somebody, then dies, and you're saying he's automatically... I disagree with you but, because there's got to be repentance. Jesus even warned well, us if a man is 
angry with his brother without a cause, he's guilty of murder. So, so in other words, repentance that is person, necessary. That person is not saved. Well, that person is not saved. Well, I think that's well. The, that's and, right. and, and then the question is, did they were they ever saved? Or there you go. That, there you go. Now I know that's a that's usually <laughs> an argument from that side of the, the aisle over there, but <laughs> uh, I, you know we all have known people that have confessed Christ and followed Christ and then are not following Christ. But we're we're really broadening the subject here. Where do you come down well, on this all, whole thing? Let me thing? say, I love the creative juices flowing here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, there, well let me, there's a couple of things I think that are being hit on, and I think they're both correct, I think, in their way. Uh, the first thing that Jesus said, dealing with the unre uh, unpardonable sin, therefore I say to you that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven. So he said the only one that's not, Jesus made it very right. clear that every sin will be forgiven. But this is where I deal with suicide. You, once you commit suicide, you can't come back and ask for forgiveness. This is why I battle with, can it be forgiven? Not because the blood has lost its power. You can't read, um, let me read it to you. First John 5, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. Uh, in verse number four it says, for whatever is born of God overcomes, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So this is where I struggle with it. If I am of believing faith, the Bible says I overcome. How can the world beat a believer and say I can't live anymore and say that that scripture is applicable to me? Now, chemical imbalances to what you mentioned, I'm not talking about that. Right. There's a, I think all suicides are not created equal. Right, there right. you go. But That's what I'm somebody up. that has lost faith, lost hope, takes their life, how can we say there are, the Bible says whoever is born of God overcomes. It's clear. So if I don't overcome the world, and that's where I think going back to your point with the blood, the faith has to be applied to the blood. So if my faith isn't applied to the blood, then I can't be forgiven. I don't have born again faith. I am not going to overcome. So the question we have to ask is that if a person does commit suicide, are they truly born there, again. There well, you go, there you go. Well, but uh, the other thing, uh, you know, is a person who's at the level of committing suicide even responsible for their own choices at that point? Or have they, maybe it's not mental illness, but have they reached a place of emotional distress so far that it's almost like they're not responsible for themselves? To me, when someone's committing suicide, Many times, maybe most times, there's a demonic element where there's an overwhelming discouragement, heaviness. I think even when Jesus cast the demons in, in Mark 5 into the swine, they did something very unusual. They all committed suicide. Well, animals don't commit suicide, so there was a demonic element. They were possessed for the, that season and they committed suicide. So to me, I heard a great quote many years ago and, and someone said this, you don't go to hell for being sick in your body. And we would all agree with that. Well, you don't go to hell for being sick in your mind. So if someone is oppressed or sick in their mind, but they do know Jesus Christ, I do believe they go to heaven. Now to Jay's point, should we be an overcomer? Absolutely. Yeah. But Revelation 2 and 3, seven different times, to him that overcomes, meaning yeah. not every believer is going to overcome. Some will be overcome. It doesn't mean they're not born again, but it does mean they're not walking in God's best. I do want to say this, for anyone thinking about suicide, yes. suicide is there. a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Amen. We have all had that spirit of heaviness come on and the enemy says, you know, you might as well end it. But I want to let you know there is always hope. There is always yes. healing. Yeah. There is always restoration. There's nothing God cannot turn around. So if that's you, get the help you need. Yes, in Jesus, but with a pastor, with a hotline, whatever it takes, but don't allow a permanent solution for something that is only temporary. Absolutely. I, I do want to say this. Hopelessness is kind of the catalyst of, yes. of, of uh, that kind of an act, a suicidal act. Don't be hopeless. There is hope always Amen. in Christ. There is hope for you. Maybe you say, oh, I've tried counseling or I've tried this and nothing seems to be working. Listen, the Lord has got hope for you. He has got hope this very day for you. Do not go anywhere near the idea of taking your own life. We we're talking about this theologically, but it's where you're living if you're in this frame of mind. And I'm here to say there is hope always in Christ. 
Well, thank you for the question, and we're coming back in 60 seconds when we ask, as a believer, can we lose fellowship with God? <laughs> Sometimes you should be with us during the break, let me tell you. <laughs> well, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to go right to our next question. We'll see where we go with this. As a believer, can I lose fellowship with God due to sin? Let's go to Pastor Jay. It's definitely hampered. Um, I'll be honest with you, even if we have children, if they keep doing wrong in your home, do you have the same fellowship with them? Just look at the natural. You don't. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that you, they're no longer your son. It doesn't mean you're no longer their daughter. It doesn't mean any of those types of things, or they're no longer your daughter. Um, but it's definitely hampered. As a matter of fact, I, God would be unjust to not be our parent. And the Bible says, whom he loves, he chastens. So it's what we do once we have uh, broken fellowship with him. What do we have? And so when, when we say the word fellowship, it doesn't mean relational status. We're talking about the relationship really that we important. have. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. I, I don't want to mention status. It's more of the fluidity of how we're vibing together. So it's like, you know, I could be hanging out with you, Pete, and mm -hmm. then you call my mama a name and I'm ready to throw <laughs> apple pie at you. I wouldn't do that. You know that what I mean? So, I, love you, I mean, now we still friends, but we got problems right now. <laughs> we got to work through those problems yeah. in order to get to where we need to be. So I think that's the thing. That's where uh, Dr. Goods, I think you just mentioned, or somebody mentioned it about how um, if we confess our sins. He's faithful. If. So that's, a, that's important. So fellowship deals with those, those mandatory ifs that we have. So it says if we have fellowship with him, if we say we have fellowship in 1 John 1, 6, when walk in darkness, we're lying, we're not practicing truth. Walk in the light, he's in the light. We'll have fellowship not only with the Father, I think that's important. Will our fellowship be broken with God? That's simple. How is our fellowship with our fellow man? Yeah. When our yeah. fellowship, and especially in church people, people that we hang with, when that shifts, something in our relationship with God shifts. We can tell a lot about our relationship with God based upon how our relationship is with people. So I believe that the short uh, answer of that is that it does impact it and it can ultimately impact it if we allow it to, but it definitely breaks down until we're willing to confess, make those things right, come into agreement with his word and then make the adjustments we need to make. You know, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter five, what does Paul say? He says, there's sin among you. Now he's writing to the church that's not even named amongst the unbelievers. And he's talking about the man that was uh, having sexual immorality with his stepmother. And what does Paul say? Paul says, you know what? Kick him out of the church, put him out. So there comes a time that, yes, I believe believers. This guy was a believer. Uh, Paul even said it. This isn't even known amongst unbelievers. And, and we cannot allow this to go on in the church. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Leavens the whole right. lump. So, I think so at that time, yeah. Tom, I believe that. Ma matter of fact, we're told in that scripture not even to be caught eating with such a one that professes to be a believer mm -hmm. and is living contrary. So, yes, I think there's times in the church that we have to call a brother and sister into repentance. So does that person then lose fellowship with God? I think well, that's where the question well, if, is. If Paul says, put him out of the church, and where's all of our sustenance and where's all yeah. of our mm -hmm. uh, encouragement, it's in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a severing there. Yeah. Can I yeah. read the scripture to that real quick? Yeah, sure. All right, just to what you mentioned, and 1 Corinthians 5, it says, for what have I to do with judging? those also who are outside. Right. Do you not judge those who are inside, but those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourself. So when you're pushing that person out, there's a right. fellowship broken that God can judge them when you push them out. Okay, Mark? With I, the intent of repentance. Of course, of course. I often compare the two words, relationship and then fellowship. They're not the same. Talking about our relationship with God. And our relationship is eternal because that's on God's end but our fellowship can be temporal. It can be good or bad. The relationship is secure. The fellowship fluctuates depending on what we're doing or not doing with the Lord. Our relationship depends on God and so it cannot be broken, 
but our fellowship depends on us. So it can be broken, it can be estranged. And I think we all have dealt with that before. Thank God for the blood, mm -hmm. thank God for repentance. Mm -hmm. the, the great thing is, because I'm a backslider, well if you slid one way, you can slide back. And wherever you're at, just slide back and say, Lord forgive me, I'm getting back into fellowship and I'm gonna be where I need to be. Galatians uh, 6, one. if a brother's caught in a sin, you who are spiritual, what? Restore. If it's automatically covered, why are we giving such strong warning to restore people? Right, right. I think for, for the way I read the question is that, um, yeah, we're not unsaved, but we lose that, that manifest presence of God. We lose that sense of following after him. Well, you know, if you look at 1 John, I, I think we have a, a misunderstanding of 1 John 1, 9, where it says, confess our sins. You know, we, we think that that's confession to have our sins forgiven. But if you look at the, and, and Jay read a verse from 1 John 1, the whole context of 1 John 1 is fellowship. Yeah. Three times in there, he says fellowship. So there's no question, he's not talking about uh, forgiveness of sin, you know, as, as far as, you know, having your sin taken away. He's talking about fellowship. And so he lets us know that if the fellowship, which answer to the question, the fellowship can be broken, that if the fellowship is broken, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us for all, from all unrighteousness. Why? So we can fellowship with him. The fellowship can be restored. That's a good, good way to wrap that up. Very good discussion. Good question. Well, let's go to our next one. Is it true that if I do not forgive, God will not forgive me. How can I truly forgive when I've been hurt so deeply? Pastor Mark. Well, we've all been in that scenario. Uh, that kind of pain can be very difficult, but we are not responsible for what happens to us, but we are responsible for our response, our reaction to that. And I want to remind everyone that forgiveness is not a feeling. You may not feel like forgiving. It is a choice. It is an act of the will. And Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. So this is not teaching that if you don't forgive, you're going to, in my opinion, miss heaven. But it does mean that fellowship is going to be broken or damaged. Now, one of the questions was, how can I truly forgive when I hurt so deeply? And I love the verse that says, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts, Romans 5, 5, by the Holy Spirit. And every believer needs to understand, you have a supernatural love to forgive, just like Jesus did, just like Stephen did when he was being stoned. And so we can lean on that. And I'll tell one quick story, Corey Ten Boom, met many years after she was out of concentra uh, concentration camp, she met one of the soldiers that had imprisoned their family. And he asked her to, for, uh, to forgive him. And he reached out his hand. And her, her sister died in a concentration camp. And she said, Lord, I can't do this. But she said, by faith, I'm going to reach out. And when she did, there was a supernatural love and forgiveness that came. How do you forgive someone that helped kill your, your sister? But God's love is greater than anything. And we can lean on that love and walk in that love to forgive. I think that is a tremendous story. Pastor Jay, what's your thoughts on this? I have a this? question about what you said. So do you believe that you don't have to forgive and you'll still be in heaven? Well, you have to. I, I do, if, if someone has a, a problem, for example, with a spouse, they have a spat or something like that, mm -hmm. if that's not been taken care of, I still believe they're going to heaven. But as far as receiving Christ, absolutely, they need to ask him to forgive them and so forth. That's my opinion. I do sure. believe it breaks, you know, you're not going to walk in the blessing of God if you're holding unforgiveness, but I don't think you'd miss heaven. That's my well, opinion. If I, if I could yeah. just yeah. Re please, read a quote by John Piper, and, and, and John Piper says that, Jesus is referring to a person who is unwilling to forgive. And he says this, what destroys us mm -hmm. is settled in the position that we are not going to forgive. We have no intention to forgive. Mm -hmm. We intend to cherish the grudge and fondle the wrong that someone did to me and feel the bitterness. It feels good. I like to go to bed with my wrath at night because he legitimately wronged me. I'm going to hold on 
to this and hold it against that person for the rest of, uh, rest of their life. And so I think that Jesus is talking about somebody that's dug in to mm -hmm. unforgiveness. You know, he's not talking about like if right now I'm struggling with, un you know, if Pete does of something course. to me right now, no. you know, and I'm struggling, man, you know, I'm having a hard time yeah. forgiving. You know, I, I know I need to, but I'm struggling. He's not talking about that person. He's talking about the person that's dug in to not forgiving another yeah, individual. You guys need like counseling? <laughs> and like, well, I love this man. <laughs> I, I, refer to, I do, I love this man. But you know, again, the, 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 as Dr. Glay said, and, and I agree with him wholeheartedly, is that if from your heart you don't forgive, look at, look at the consequences. You're delivered over to the torturers. That's what the scripture says, torturers. And that's the reason why we have so many tormented believers, as, as you said, Dr. Glaze, well, that's, people- that's what bitterness does to you. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, a torture. Yeah. And, and you could probably shorten your life by doing that. Cancer, diabetes, and, and, and all the rest because of you're refusing to forgive yeah. somebody. It's so important to walk in forgiveness. There's so much to it. We don't have time to get in it, but pick up some good resources about mm. forgiveness, what it is, what it isn't, how you walk in it, all those things. We're commanded to walk in that, but how do we do that? It's a great question. Well, coming up in 60 seconds, we ask, can you see hell when you die? Welcome back to Hard Questions. Well, let's go to our hotline question. When a person is dying and they are not right with God and have not been right with God and they refuse to get right with God, when they are entering into death, is it possible that they can actually see hell and, and or even feel some of it as they die? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. I guess implicit in this question, I think she's asking is will they see it as they're still passing and make a commitment to Christ or something? Where do you come down on that? Yeah, okay, well, I, I'm going to start on the flip side. Okay. Okay, and when Stephen was uh, being stoned yeah. to death, you know, the scripture says that he, he was full of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know we're talking about an unsaved person, so I'm going to get to that. Uh, looking steadfastly into heaven, he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So here was a man that was dying, you know, and right before his death, he was able to see into eternity. God pulled back the curtain. Uh, an unsaved person, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if, if, if it's possible for them to see hell or death, but I will say this. If God wants them to see it, they can see it. You know, if God wants to pull back the curtain and, and they see what hell is like and they see, you know, what death feels like, God can do it. I, you know, I don't have any definitive, maybe one of these brothers ha have it. I don't have any definitive evidence as far as an unsaved person. You know, what's the difference? They're going there. <laughs> you, you know, no, look at it. They're going there. And, yeah. and so the emphasis is whether they see it or not, that's where they're going to be throughout all of eternity. And I don't say that heartlessly. I say that, you know, if, if you don't know Jesus, that, that's where we got to get that message back out. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, there's only one other place for you to wind up throughout all of eternity. And God will have given them other opportunities oh, to I'm repent sure, by this I'm point. Sure. Jay, where do you Real come quickly, uh, there's this. a great uh, documentary out called After Death. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's really good. And uh, it's about people's experiences that were on at the door, okay. but then came back. And it's uh, Christian based and it's really good. Uh, the Bible doesn't give a lot of examples besides you have Stephen, but people that peered in, but then came back or peered in and went on because it's hard to kind of give an account from the grave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stephen was given a report at that time what he saw. So it's easy to see that there, but people that are like unconscious and going into that place, this uh, movie uh, gives a lot of documentary about it and it's pretty neat. But, uh, but I, I believe this, that um, I don't believe that uh, they're gonna like be alive and say, I'm on my way to hell. If that was the case, I'd probably come back and say, hey, let me get yeah. this right, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I think what'll happen in those, I believe when people are 
going into that place, there is going to be kind of that light that they're going to, which you hear a lot of people, are people that are walking into something that's evil. So that's been documented that people have experienced both sides and they've come back and sometimes and then repented and gave their life to Jesus. Mark, so. just about a minute. Yeah, there's one verse, Isaiah 55, 6 and 8. Seek the Lord while he can yeah. be found. <laughs> yeah. Call on him now while he is He's near. And so some people think, well, I've got time. I'll receive him later. But to me, when I look at the scripture, there is a time when you are no longer able to find him or he is no longer near, and that's when you die. And so you don't want to put it off and say, I'll do it later, because if something happens, a car crash, something else, it can be too late. Yeah. So you don't want to procrastinate and say, I'll just do it later. Think about that verse, seek the Lord while he can be found. Remember what uh, the rich man said oh. from, he said, let me go back and warn them. And they, they said, they have Moses and the prophets. And he goes, but they won't listen. But if someone came back, they'd listen. And it, Abraham said, no, they wouldn't listen, you know, if, even if somebody came back. So wow. don't put it off to your deathbed. Make the decision today that you're going to follow Christ. Now, I know that the caller, I'm sure you're a Christian, but you're thinking of someone else. But whoever it is, Make the decision today. If you're watching this program and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, just open the door of your heart and say, come in. Mm -hmm. Now you need to be yes. willing to repent of your sins, to turn from sin and serve the living God. That's what you need to do. Things will begin to change in your life. Everything won't be perfect, but everything will be under the care of Jesus. So thank you so much for being with us today. We love uh, to, to hear your questions. We hope you enjoyed today's program. We want you to email your hard questions to us at hardquestions at ctvn.org or call our hotline at 412-349-4326. Have a great day.